what is up guys so look I wanted to talk about um, I wanted to talk about we had a camera talk the other day and yesterday and I wanted to kind of expound on that I am, I've been looking for a replacement not even a replacement uh, an extra a better or a better or somewhat the same as my GH5 um, I, I want to spend the money either to to get better glass better stuff for the GH5 or I want to find something that I can switch out to you know switch over to and so the the, 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 the two choices that I've really had I would say three um, have been I would say four uh, have really been honestly the uh, the, the, the Sony a7 III, the Canon EOS R, um, and I'll start with those two. I've been looking mainly at those because those were like the most widely uh, suggested by some of the top YouTubers, um, especially in the tech space, uh, for, for video. And so I really started checking them out, and what I'm digging from both is that the, auto, the autofocus if you want to use autofocus, like for vlogging and you're, you're tired of man, uh, doing the manual lens dance, you know, trying to trying to use manual lens, uh, manually uh, adjusting the lens all the time, those two cameras are amazing. And the differences that I seen between them two is the Canon is obviously faster uh, when autofocusing, uh, but the Sony is no slouch at all. And uh, it gets even better if you're using better glass. So if you got the Sony and you're using, uh, you know, you're using, uh, you know, you're using the, uh, the, the, the the G, you know, the G glass, then, you know, the Sony G glass, then you're going to be good to go. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's really, really nice. But a lot of people have been trashing the, I've seen a lot of people trash the EOS R from Canon simply because it looks like a stripped down, uh, bare bones to me in my opinion like a 5d mark IV. Um, and you know there's pros and cons I can kind of understand the argument why anybody would pay the price that Canon wants for it uh, that's one of the things that when you see something like that it does make you say damn like are they serious they're making you pay for a stripped down version of of a, of a competitor and they're asking you to pay more like to me that's a uh that's like one of those you know if you're coming from the pc world that's like one of those nvidia moves it, you know it, it's one of those those apple moves where you pay more for something that you really shouldn't be compared to the competition so i said that to say this the eos r has an has an amazing image now the pros that you do get out of it, it's obviously, obviously is a full sensor, uh, a full sensor chip, um, which means it's gonna look amazing. Uh, for some reason, you have to definitely look at a full frame versus uh, a micro four thirds or you know our smaller sensor. It just looks so so creamy. It looks good, and um, I was really shocked simply because I kept seeing videos of the one D. 1DX Mark II, and that's from Canon. And I kept seeing these images, and I kept seeing the, this video, um, and by like Maddie, uh, Maddie H. Uh, who else? Um, <coughs> there's a couple more people who uh, film with the uh, the 1DX. There's another tech guy that I seen. He was filming with the first, and I was like, damn, that shit looks good. How does he get his video like that? And, um, but the 1DX Mark II looks just gorgeous. So I was like, damn, I can't afford a 1DX Mark II. It's just like almost, it's like $5,500. Uh, you can go buy a cinema camera for that, for that amount of money. But that's Canon. Um, the, the next step would be the, the 5D Mark IV. Um, in my, in my opinion, probably, the, yeah, the five, probably the 5D Mark IV or one of the flavors that they got that they released of it. Um, they look good. It looks really, really good. Um, so the 5D was one of them. It was one of the four that I was thinking about uh, over the EOS R. But you know what? That takes me to the Sony. When I get to the Sony, the Sony A7 III. This is, this is the thing that they don't tell you. 
and which I'm kind of upset about. They don't tell you that even though the Sony is priced slightly below the EOS R, and it comes with a, a ton of a ton of um, abilities, right? A ton of abilities. That's where the affordability stops, in my opinion, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Sony is extremely proprietary, just like Canon, and they're just as expensive, right? I know a lot of people are going to say Canon is super expensive with their lenses. Yes, they are, but Sony's lenses are astronomical, and... You could get the A7 III um, with a kit lens, a 28 to 70, I believe. It's either 28 to 70 or 28 to 105 or something like that. But it's the kit lens version. There's two different versions, right? That version is like a 3.5 to 4 or F4 or something like that. Uh, not bad, but compared to um, compared to the to the to the G glass, to the to the G baby, compared to the G, it ain't nothing. And the price tells you everything as well. You know, um, for example, with my with in with my taste of um, of uh, video blogging and stuff like that, I would need at least the 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 G glass sixteen to thirty five. I think uh, is what is what they have. I would need that, right? And every single one of the G glasses are at least I think they all start at $21.99 a piece so the glass is more expensive than the camera body right so by the time you go and put the a7 III in your in your basket right and then you go and you put you get that that nice G glass right whether you know and whatever focal length you need it at right once you do that right <laughs> you're looking at your cart and you're like damn that's over four G's. That's four racks. Four racks. Right? And I ain't even got I ain't even got a memory card yet. Right? If I wanna if I wanna vlog with the Sony, I I don't even have a way to tell if I'm in the frame. If I'm frame framing my shots right. So you gotta go buy an external monitor. And if you really want to get some creamy footage, you'll go buy an external monitor and recorder like an Atomos Ninja 5 or something, right? That's going to set you back another $1,000 plus. So when you look at the means of obtaining a Sony, it starts to look bleak really quickly um, if you are, you know, looking to, to, to get a serious bump in quality. This is the reason why I feel and why I feel like and why I have so much respect and so much admiration for my GH5 because it was expensive as hell uh, when I first got it when it first came out. You know, the 18, the 18, you know, the, the Sigma 18 was expensive as hell to me. It's still expensive as hell. $700, people. $700 is, <laughs> $700 ain't cheap. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, seven hundred dollars ain't cheap. You know, so it's like, damn. You know, once you see that cost, it makes you want to kind of just stay away from the Sony. Um, that only leaves the Canon, and I honestly feel very, very bad, and it, it should almost feel like a like an immediate regrettable purchase if you purchase the EOS R because it's so stripped down that yes, while you can get good footage out of it, professional grade footage out of it, I, I, compared to the 5D Mark IV, compared to the 1DX2, and I know they have a varying prices, price range, it just doesn't seem like it's a smart move to invest that much money um, into that camera that's so limited. It's like trying to squeeze as much as you can out of something really, really small. And it just seems kind of dumb to do that. So, you know, I don't know. So that kind of leaves me with my last fourth choice. And I was looking at the um, the Panasonic S1 and S1R. 
and it looks beautiful. Again, the only dilemma with that is it's brand new. Doesn't have a lot of available glass, and the glass that is available, that L mount glass, that Leica, that shit is just as expensive as the Sony ones, man. So it's like, damn, okay, if I get this, this S1, I can get the 28 to 105 millimeter, right? It looks superb. It's at, I think it's at F4. Not the best. You know, I would like a 1.8 or something, or 2.8 at least. Um, but, you know, that's what you get with the G glass. That's why it's shit so expensive. But, you know, you get that L mount glass and you, you're kind of stuck. You know, Sigma has something right now, whether it's on pre order. You can get the uh, the EF mount adapter, kind of like a speed booster to L mount, so you'll be able to use your EF lenses um, on the on on the on the S1, which is cool. Um, and it's not going to be that much. I think the mount I think the mount was only like 170, 180 bucks. Um, but other than that, I mean, you are, you, I mean, you're pretty much stuck. You have to wait for better glass to come out, compatible glass to come out or an adapter like i said like the ef mount that will allow you to use another lens on you know on your camera uh and hope that it it doesn't crop it and do all this crazy stuff to it so you can get a decent image uh you know that that's a that's a big chance and that s1 is super expensive so you know if you get it with the with the 28 to, to 105 that shit is going to run you about 3300 dollars. that's about the same price as a, a, a 5d mark IV body alone <laughs> so you know it's like damn man this is why people tend to stick with um like i said with with the gh5 gh4s um the 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 the, the lower end cusp you know what i mean that's why everybody tries to do what they can get what they can out of the gh5 because i'm telling you if you start moving up your pockets are going to cry cry Catch y'all in a little bit.